Hey, I'm Vespers, Ableton Live Certified Trainer, and today I'm going to take you through a glitch hop sound design tutorial. I'm going to show you step by step how I made this. I also wanted to let you know that if you're really serious about taking your production to the next level and you want to move beyond what I can offer here on YouTube, then come and check out our courses in music production and sound design. On our website, we have a range of courses on everything from synthesis to sound design to mixing and mastering, basic all the way through advanced from some of the top instructors in the industry. To check them out, just click the link below in the description field of the video. All right, let's get back to this glitch tutorial. So to show you how I made this, we're going to start off with the beats. I've got a rendered out drum loop that I made here. So it's pretty sparse, and we're going to add in some glitchy percussion to fill that drum loop out. I've got a folder of percussion samples here. I'm going to select all of them and drag them over to their own audio track. Now with them all highlighted, I'm going to go into the launch mode right here, and I'm going to use follow actions to program them to fire automatically. Follow actions are down at the bottom here, and I'm going to program the follow action to be any. So what's going to happen is after one of these clips fires, it's automatically going to fire any other clip, which is a random choice, after a certain amount of timing, and the timing is right here. Anyone familiar with follow actions will know this, but basically what this is is bars and beats and then divisions of a beat. So I'm going to take this down. This is a 16th note and I'm going to leave it as a 16th note. So now listen to what happens when I fire off one of these clips. So that's giving us some nice glitchy source material to work with. I've deleted that track now and I just wanted to show you guys how I made it. This is the actual track in the song that we're going to be working with that contains the same glitch effects. But in this case, I've got a audio effect rack on here with a whole bunch of devices that is helping me to blend in the glitchy bits with the main beat and further shape them and add some processing. So I'm going to walk you through each device that I've created here. First thing is a gate. And what the gate is doing is shaving off some of the excessively long tails and just shortening up the sounds. So you can see I've adjusted the threshold and return to taste, and you'll be able to see in the visual display here that it's actually acting and cutting out some of the audio. Next up, I put a reverb on it to give my own artificial sense of space that I could control and tailor into my liking around each one of the hits. You'll see I'm using the low cut and high cut filters to avoid excessive frequency bleeding from muddying things up in the other ranges. And I'm really taking back the high diffusion network. I have a fairly small decay time and uh, about 25% wet dry. Next in line is our multiband dynamics plugin. You can see I've deactivated both the high and the low bands and I'm using it as a single band device here. And I'm using it as an expander. Down here with these little switches, I've put it into below and adjusted the threshold all the way to the very top. And I've taken the ratio and set it at infinite to one. Now what a compressor normally does is take sound that exceeds a threshold and reduces it by the ratio. So it makes the louder bits quieter. In this case, how I have this device set up, it's going to be doing the opposite of that. It's going to be taking anything below the threshold. It's going to make it louder by an infinite to one ratio. So anything that's quieter than zero dB, it's gonna bring up to zero dB. So it's really gonna bring out any quiet parts in all of our audio clips. So check it out without and with. And you're really hearing this short reverb acting on the signal as well because it's bringing up the very short reverb tail. After the multiband dynamics device, we have a side chaining compressor. And this is to knock the glitchy percussion bits out of the way of the main kick and snare. So I've engaged sidechain mode. I'm reading the audio input from our beats track, which is our drum loop. And you can see I've also engaged the EQ in low pass mode. 
and set it at 200 hertz. And that is because our drum loop has a hi-hat in it that I don't want to trigger the sidechain on the compressor. So I'm filtering that out and setting it at 200 hertz allows the kick and the snare to trigger the sidechain without having the hi-hats trigger it. Then I've adjusted the attack and the release and the mode to avoid any pops and clicks that sometimes happen with aggressive sidechain compression. All right, now we're getting into some more effects. I've used a combination of a max LFO and a ping pong delay. And the reason why I'm using the ping pong delay is to spread the beats out in the stereo field. The ping pong delay is great at that. I have it set with zero feedback, so it's just giving one slap back every time I run it. And I have it selected right here on the two setting. It's synced to the host tempo. I have it at 75% wet. And I'm using the LFO to control filter frequency here. So it's mapped out to the filter frequency. You can see it moving. Now it's not moving in a straight sine wave. You would normally see with an LFO, it's fiddling around. And that's because I've increased the jitter parameter here, which is going to randomize it. It's going to make it jiggle. And I noticed with jitter, uh, it can get a little harsh sometimes. Like watch this, if I take smoothing down, see it's really freaking out here. And to eliminate that kind of freak out, I'm, I'm adding a little bit of smoothing to it, which, well, it smooths it out a bit. So let's check this out without the ping pong, and then I'll add it in. All right, let's move over to the glitchy synth bits now. I've used a technique that also relies on follow actions, but using a bit of a different process. So I started off by creating a bit of a MIDI pattern, and I programmed my Virus TI synth to respond to the MIDI pattern and rendered out a whole bunch of audio clips. So I've got a whole bunch of different patches here from the virus. So I've used a range of bass sounds to lead sounds to pad sounds to arpeggiated sounds, and they'll all get mixed up into the track. So we're going to take these clips and select all of them. And we're going to go down here and select launch modes. Similar to the last process, we're going to use follow actions. And in this case, we're going to use the same follow action, which is any. And we're going to reduce the timing from one bar to three sixteenth notes. So every three sixteenth notes, it's going to change, sounding like this. <laughs> But we have a problem. It's starting every new clip from the very beginning. And we actually have a whole progression that's four bars long, which is playing different notes in our MIDI pattern. And we want to preserve that. I want to play that whole MIDI pattern, but switch to the different patches. Now you can do that by keeping all of the clips selected, like so, and selecting legato mode. And what legato mode will do is say we fire off this clip right here, and it plays for the first little bit. As soon as this clip finishes playing and it fires the next clip, say it's this one, it's going to start this next clip playing from the last clip's stop position, preserving the entire MIDI pattern. So it sounds very different. Check this out. Next, I've added a series of audio effects to help to blend the sounds. Now we have a sub that's playing. So I've high-passed each one of these synth sounds here using an EQ8. I've used an identical multiband dynamics plugin as a expander here to expand out some of the sounds and some of the nice reverbs and delays that are on those virus patches. I've used a saturator to add a little bit of drive, and I've knocked the volume back, so I'm just adding a little bit of warmth. I have a short reverb plugin, 500 milliseconds, a little bit of wet dry, taking out a lot of the top end in the diffusion network low cut, high cut. And then I've added in another EQ8. And I wanted to add an EQ8 here before and after because I wanted the multiband dynamics plugin to respond to the high pass signal. And then I wanted to add some additional EQing afterwards with a not taking out some with a high shelf. I've added a little bit of compression. <laughs> And then I've added a side chaining compressor similar to the other one set up to respond to the beats with the low pass on it. And it's being 
knocked out of the way every time the kick and the snare come in. So altogether, it sounds like this. So what I did at this point is I printed everything and recorded it into Arrangement View. So we're going to hit the Tab key, and we're going to go over to Arrangement. So we're going to go back to Arrangement here, and you can see the audio clips that I've fired in. In particular, this big black mess here is uh, all of the little tiny glitchy bits that are all just firing in such rapid succession. And I did a little bit of editing once everything got over into Arrangement View. I did some cutting and pasting and some reversing of these synth clips to give me what I felt was a bit of a better sound. So you don't have to stick with just what comes out of this thing. It gives you a starting point from which you can further edit things in Arrangement View. So here's my finished version. <laughs> So that wraps up our tutorial on glitch percussion and glitching audio clips from synthesizers. Hope you guys liked that. Thanks for watching. And as always, if you want some more info on the other things that I do in our online courses, come back to vespers.ca. Thanks.